Hi there, this is a video about a GPS synchronized wall clock that I made in 2011 as a year 12 senior project in high school. It has these separate digits all connected to a control box which contains a GPS receiver which I use to get an accurate time reference. Let's take a look at the circuit diagram. At the heart of it is a PICAX40X2 microcontroller which is a PIC with a special bootloader which allows you to program it serially very easily. It receives the time signals via a GPS receiver in the M406, which is this guy here, typical string which we would output in the NMEA standard format is this one here. The string we're interested in is this little bit here, which is UTC time, so that's Universal Time Coordinated Time, um, which is this format, which is in this format hours, hours, minutes, minutes, seconds, seconds, point, seconds, seconds, seconds. So that's the format. We don't worry about these fine seconds, we just worried about those six characters there. So it reads them in, passes them, and decodes them to other stuff, time shifts it for 24 feet or offset from from that time by a certain number of hours, adds, adds if daylight savings if it's appropriate, a few other things, and then it sends out that data to all of these these six chips here to display it on the display. Those six chips are 4511 seven segment decoder driver chips. They are basically a chip that takes this that 4-bit bus that I was talking about in and latches it with this latch pin and then decodes it into a 7-segment representation of that binary number in decimal, obviously. Um, and then it has a driver output with a... Uh, the decoder has a blanking input, I should add. Um, so you can turn it all on or off at once, and there is also a, another input here which I don't use, and that uh, sent, that has your uh, A through G seven segment outputs on it. So they come out here. So those are the four lines here, all shared between all of the devices, and then the latch enable the sorry yeah, the latch enable uh, pin, or all separate pins go into the controller. And if say the microcontroller wants to put a certain digit on on this particular segment, this first one here, then it will put that value on the bus, on this bus that's shared between all of them, and then pulse the latch pin high, and that will put that, load that into that chip, and then that will put it out onto one of these chips, which I'll go into now. They are Darlington driver chips, so basically just have a whole, you know, seven Darlington driver pairs like this in there, and they just uh, when you put a signal on the input, they will pull the output low, so you can sync current through them. And that's what happens here. Each of the se segments which are connected onto these connectors is a common anode, and each of the segments has three LEDs in series with the current limiting resistor. And are all connected to 12 volts at one end and have a separate ground, which comes through here, and then is connected through the ground to turn it on. Then we have these two connectors here, which are for the colons, the dots in between the segments. They just have a single transistor to turn them on and off, which is all they need. And also, there is an LDR in each of them, although I'm only using one at this stage, uh, to sense the light level in the room to adjust the brightness. And the, the brightness is adjusted via this voltage modulation output here, which is fed to all of these, to the blanking input of all of these devices. So they will keep their latched state. The, the latch, this, this happens after the latch, obviously. Um, so the latch stays hold, holds the current value, but the blanking input just blanks the output temporarily. So by feeding a pulse width modulation signal to all of those pins, you can control the brightness of the display. And there's also a 7805 regulator to provide power for all the pickaxe and the various logic chips and the GPS receiver. And there is also some buttons to set the offset and daylight savings in 12 24 hour time there is two other indicator but two other indi indicator LEDs and a reset switch inside and there's also a DC barrel jack connector for supplying 12 volts in to the segments okay now onto the PCB in the center here we have the pickaxe 40 x2 uh, controlling everything is the GPS module footprint with its little SMD connector here are the buttons that set the settings, they poke through the end of the case. There is a serial programming interface for the pickaxe. Um, over here we have one 
seven segment decoder and one Darlington driver chip for each digit which is connect which are connected via these RJ45 connectors and then up the top here we have the 7805 which is providing 5 volts for the pickaxe and the logic chips here's the LED boards each one consists of three LEDs you can see D1, 2 and 3 there and a series current limiting resistor R1 on a small board I etched it all together and then cut them apart with a circuit board cutter and here's the boards for the colons, the dots between the digits, they just have a single LED and a current limiting resistor. The main control board is double sided and because I etched it myself I had to uh, have a way of doing vias and the way I did that was with these little uh, pins, you po push them through, snap them off, solder on one side, turn it over and solder it on the other side, it's quite simple. To solder the SOIC packages on the back of the main control board I used the reflow soldering technique, so here I've put the thermal paste on the pads and then I placed the components and reflowed them in a toaster oven and I did the same for all the LED boards, much faster than soldering them by hand so here I am placing the components on and then soldering them in the refill oven and once the main board was done it looked like this you can see the pickaxe in the middle there, the GPS receiver and all the connectors and all the other ICs are on the bottom of the board near those connectors to make the each of the digits you can see that there is a white piece of acrylic around the outside that I machined out on a CNC machine so here's a design for the front of those white uh, cases and here's the design for the tool paths of one of the colons and here's the CNC machine cutting it out that resulted in uh, each of these so there is this main piece in the middle and then a uh, black piece on the back and a white piece over the top which is the cover and the wires run the LED boards sit in these grooves the wires run behind them in those shallow pockets and all the wires come out the bottom where you can see them coming out through there and the boards are just glued in the tops and it's all sandwiched together which results in something look like looks like this you can see the black layer on the back there and there's the final product hope you enjoyed the video catch you next time